Hello. Hello, Austin. Hello, Jack. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I say that as if we haven't just been in court like a half an hour ago. <laughs> anyways, guys. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, I was going to say. Uh, today, we're starting the last case of the first Apollo Justice game been a while it has been a while been just a, just a little bit a while just just a little bit just a little while <laughs> um yeah we're starting the last case of the first apollo justice game which is turnabout succession uh which should be fun it's quite a long game not long game long case long case that's what i meant it's quite a long case but 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 it should be fun because it i think this case is where is the case that kind of solves the answer, like gives us the answer of what happened to Phoenix, um, like and like how did he get disbarred, um, etc., etc., etc. Um, so yeah, should be a fun case. Should be a fun case, and I think Kristoff um, comes back comes back in this case, um, and we haven't seen Kristoff since the first case of since talking about Trump. So, yeah. So yeah, it should be fun. Um, oh yeah, video essay of the week. Video essay of the week. Talk to me, addiction and grief. By lucky, I really like this video essay. Actually, I really enjoyed like just like listening it, listening to it. And plus, plus, I didn't realize that this video. I I clicked on this. I had this video in my watch later playlist, not realizing it's by a creator I already follow on TikTok. So yeah <laughs> so yeah it should be fun should be, it's it's a uh, quite a good video say it's like 10 minutes long 11 minutes long so yeah recommend that you go watch that um ninjago the the first 10 episodes the first half of this year's ninjago season came out yesterday and i honestly thought that it wouldn't come out on april 4th in the uk because usually in the UK it comes out a little bit later than in America and on like Lego's official website um, it said April 4th for like, the US, the USA but for the majority of other countries including the UK it said April so I wasn't sure whether it would um, whether it would um, be released on April 4th or not but it, did. it got released on ITVX and probably a few other streaming services but I saw it I watched it on ITVX um, um, and I really enjoyed it actually I really really enjoyed it um, I can't I, I, don't, I really don't want to spoil it for you guys that haven't watched it because it literally only came out yesterday but oh my god it's such a good season and I'm just I'm just itching for, not, for more Ninjago content I just God, I love in Ninjago. God, I love Ninjago. Also, 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 also. The other day, so last week I ordered some stuff. I ordered some stickers and stuff. Um, I also ordered. I could take it off my bag, but I don't want to. <laughs> I also ordered this keychain. Can you? Can you see that? 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 Yeah, I ordered this keychain, which is okay. You can't really see it that well. Which is um, Adrian Andrews from. The original Wright Trilogy. The original Phoenix Wright Trilogy. Uh, thanks for the look, Kai. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I got a um, pin of Adrian Andrews from the original Wright Trilogy. And the reason I got... Um, and the reason I got Adrian... Is that going to play? Yes. <laughs> Actually, it's not... Rasputin is not as loud as I thought it would be. <laughs> So, hello Ma, hello, hello, welcome on in, welcome on in. Um, but yeah, the reason I got Adrian is because she is probably my favourite witness. And also she's from one of my favourite cases. She was introduced in Farewell My Turn About. He's loud and recipe teens. Definitely, definitely. Uh, to be fair though, I think I've got it up to 100% on, on um, sound alerts. I mean, I can see if I can turn it up a little bit more. Um, but we'll see, we'll have to see. Well, I'll have to check it out later. Um, but yeah. I got Adrian Andrews and Adrian Andrews keychain because favourite witness from one of my favourite cases. Um, but yeah, but yeah, what else do I have to talk about? Um, 
thanks for the look, Matt. Um, I don't think I have anything else to really talk about. My week has been kind of boring, just, you know, revising. Oh yeah, on Monday, on Monday, I was supposed to work. I was supposed to work two till six, uh, but I got it off. I <laughs> literally, I was streaming last week and um, it was like quarter past eight, because I usually, I was on, it was on Sunday, because I usually go live at half seven on Sundays. Um, and I think it was like quarter past eight, I got a text from a manager being like, hey, I've like overbooked my hours or something. Um, you don't need to come in tomorrow. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. I said it's to go like a yes to my manager because it's like, yeah. I was just like, okay. So yeah, I did go in on Monday and don't remember what I did. I think I, I think I just played on, so I think I just played on some Minecraft or something instead of, um, I think I just played some Minecraft, honestly, instead of, oh yeah, I streamed, I streamed. Didn't I? I streamed on Monday. But that was at, that was at like nine. Oh yeah, on Monday, on Monday, on Monday. I also, also, also. Also, also, at like half a on Monday, I had a little mini interview with a fellow streamer, and I should notify you guys. Always nice to have days off. I've been lurking currently, fighting off an ear infection, so half up. Oh no, that's that that shit. That sounds like absolute shit. I hope you get better soon, Kai. Hope you get better soon. Um, I think I think I mentioned this on Monday stream. I had a little mini interview with a fellow streamer. And I should notify you guys when there, when um, her video is out. I should know if I, I'll put it in my Discord or... Uh, thank you, of course, of course, guy. Or I'll put it on like Twitter or something. Be like, hey, I'm in this video. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I need to talk about, really. Um, yeah, that's all I need to talk about. Let's get into 10 about succession. Okay, but first, what, with how this case is broken up this case is broken up and i'm gonna get up the i'm gonna get it through the walkthrough just so i remember how this case um is broken up um because i think it's i think it's i know there's an investigation and then a trial into two parts so there's an investigation there's a trial that's split up into trial farmer and love and then another trial that's broken into trial for my lawyer. Then there's another investigation. Then there's another trial that's only one part. So, I don't know how to split up this stream because it's either I do the investigation and then a two trial, or I do they just do the investigation, or I do the investigation and trial pharma of the first trial. I think I might try and aim to do investigation and then first out part of the trial. And then on Sunday, we do, um, and Sunday maybe we do, um, trial latter maybe. I do like a short stream, slightly short stream on Sunday. And then next week, next week, maybe we do, um, the second trial on the Friday and then do the investigation and the trial next Sunday. I think I might... I think I might do it that way actually. I'll do the investigation and trial farmer today. And then on Sunday we can do trial ladder. Yeah, we'll do it we'll do it like that. We'll do it. We'll we'll do it like that. We'll do investigation trial farmer today. So load game. Day one investigation. Talk about succession. Last case of last case for of uh, the first apologists. And that is the whole truth of this case. Mason system. Ooh. Ooh, binary. Hmm. One day six over nine five. I don't know what that fuck that means. Someone's dead. Someone's dead. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. This looks complicated. Ooh, I'm guessing this is poker. This is probably poker. Seeing as though Phoenix plays poker. Nothing happens by chance, all is connected. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was poker. Ooh. 
And now, we stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Is this our client, maybe? Or is that the victim? Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. Christoph, it's Christoph. I told you, I told you he'd be back. We're back at right anything. Hey Apollo, look on TV. Look, look. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of busy. Whoa, look at that. He's the last Grimera, all right, amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Ow, 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 what, what? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Lies are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. And why now? That case was three months ago. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm wowing, wowing the crowd by figuring out how Lemire disappeared. That's right, Uncle Valen did that in Legion 2. We are missing him on TV right now. I was just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch the little TV with her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're see now seeing is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth. Happening right now at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum? That's where the Gavner's concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here right before your unbelievable eyes. The legendary troupe Gramere is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The legendary Grimere's. If Trucy's real father was still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Oh, who is it? Ah, you're here. Working hard or hardly working? Oh, it's Phoenix. It's Phoenix. Hey, how you been? Hi there, stranger. I'm not the kind of green I'd want to hear from my own kid. Though, he has been gone a long time. Ha, uh, how, how goes it, Trucy? Hey, yeah, I've got a present for you. Yay, pudding. I love pudding. Oh, it's farm fresh. And not just one pu pudding, but three whole cups. I'll have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. <laughs> How right you are. So, you still can't tell us what your mission is? Maybe it is time. It's something to do with you anyway. Huh? With me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. A spy. Can I just be a defense attorney? To be honest, telling you about this mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me. You've heard of the ju jurist system, yes? Jury, yeah. The jury system? That's right. The new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. The jurist system, huh? Let's talk to her about it. So Daddy, what's this jurist system thing? Yeah, maybe maybe it works differently than in uh, Great Ace Attorney. Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy is innocent or guilty. Do you know Apollo? Uh, yeah, I, I do actually. Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the Jurist system. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Not quite that harsh. The Jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. Ah, and there will be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Well, you know your stuff, Apollo. The findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully, people will start taking the cause a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show. Starring Dr. Wright. <laughs> Dr. Wright, his assistant Trucy, and mascot Apollo. Perfect team! Mascot- Hey! More like Trucy should be the mascot. So, what is this secret mission? The jury system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky Apollo. <coughs> Too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk and nothing gets decided. Kinda like you, Apollo. 
Uh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, I'm going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. We'll take a case as a sample and choose six jurors. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping? How? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the juror system simu simulated court committee. The chair constructs a, the ideal situation, choosing the case, the jurors, candidates, even the judge and the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. Once a liar, always a liar, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. A simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the, is the trial simulation about? Well, since it is the first run-through of a new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking. No sense wearing yourself out on something too serious. True, the case is a murder. That's not simple at all. Yeah, exactly. But to be fair, he is like kind of used to it, not gonna lie. By simple deed, do you mean the defendant is... Guilty? Yes, most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? In the trial tomorrow, you're defending, of course. Recall that I, sa that I said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. It's just a test case anyway. No sweat! Uh-huh, and yet this is the longest case in this game. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst case scenario. <sighs> you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial, that's a real trial. Other farms have been filed. There's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you can make room in your schedule. Why am I the only hearing about this now? Ah oh, yes, there was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. Okay. Why are we asking her about Gomera again, game? <laughs> hey, Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission. But what about this? The Troop Gomera Grande Grand Magic Show. Huh? Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks. The Grand Illusions. Miracles. The Apocalypse. Heaven and Earth. Heaven and Earth will shake. So what? That's three whole days from now. It's at the Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go. Let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valen. Have fun. What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Right. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You're all about it tomorrow regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee, now you can take me to the Coliseum. I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Grimera, that reminds me. What's this, Daddy? Isn't that so carved with Grimera's seal? Consider it a birthday present, should we say? Thanks, it's great. But today isn't my birthday. Good point. What day is it today, Apollo? Huh? Today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. Then it's a Recycle Your Plastics present. Yippee! So it's plastic! I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Huh? You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Why are you being fucking cryptic, Phoenix? Why give it to her? Why, why give it to her if she can't open it? <laughs> well, why don't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do. And Phoenix is not logical. He's a fucking dumbass. And I should know, I played for him for like, not three whole games, but like the majority of three games. Because if you think about it, we played for Mia for two cases in Trials and Tribulations, and then we did part uh, uh, one part of an investigation with Edgeworth. That's like it. An envelope about the Grimmaries, huh? Hmm. Okay, let's ask him about the trial simulation. Alright, so what case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Of course I do, I mean, I'm going to be defending, gun I? If all goes well, then yes. Of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions. A blank slate, if, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Come each chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose. 
I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good, that's better. But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What the hell am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the, the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo, if I'm in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility. For good or for bad. Just do what you can. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Uh, Alright. I recommend going down to the detention centre. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you could talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. But times are wasted. Okay. Detention centre time. Deten oh wait, what are, what are the achievements for this case? Um, completed. There's one for completed, it, which is for every case. Um, let me see. Let me have a little look. Um, for choosing guilty as the jurist in episode four. Um. We'll have to um we'll have to save before we do that then. Um I don't think there's anything else. Oh wait, I wanna examine, I wanna examine. One of the achievements is examining a beloved Charlie. The plan, it intrigues you, doesn't it? Not really, it's just the only thing in here that doesn't have some secret function. Aha, uh -huh. no no secrets, but lots of memories. And a name too, when I hear it? Not really. His name is Charlie, if you were curious. Really, I wasn't. Ah, I don't want any of me to click it again. Now let's go. Let's go to the to the detention centre. Then we can go to the Sunshine Coliseum. That's twenty minutes we've been in waiting here. Twenty minutes. Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. Uh, you know, the minute we get angry, the, the client will show. It always works that way. And shouting, oh, wait, and they're standing right behind you. Oh, God, is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Oh, there she is. Eek. Uh, where'd you come from? Well, anyway, please have a seat. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why do you do something intrusive? You're a magician, aren't you? That's right! Okay. Ah, it's our lovely Mr. App. I'm the amazing Mr. App. Passed out. Hmm. Miss Magic Underwear might have been a better bet. That's Magic Panties, Apollo. Introductions. Uh, uh, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fate, you know. And my feet, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? Tell me, what's your sign? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. I just got carried away there. I seem destined to get difficult clients, it seems. Um, so, what's your name? Alright, I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice. And I'm Tracy Wright. I know. This is getting nowhere fast. Hey, I know. Maybe you could tell us what happened. I'm a defense attorney after all. Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? 
Well, the other day this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Truce. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. Though, I think I understand despair a little better now. You need a good Apollo. Look, she's doing her nails. What? I think our nails more important than defense. Is that it? Let's go, Truce. Excuse me. Could you. Could you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. This is the love letter we passed from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It, it's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Vera Mission. The address is for Drew Studio. So let's go there then. And you're giving me this card because... Well, it looks like we're finished there. I wonder if True Studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. Let's go. Let's go. We're at a Drew Studio. Well, this looks like... It looks like a studio. It looks like life imitating art. I think it's the other way around. Mm. But a take on the ground there. It's a bit jarring. Yeah, it looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. I hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking. Hmm. Huh? Apollo, look at this one. Looks half finished. You can see, still see the rough sketch of me. That's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. That is odd. Hmm. All the paintings have a really different style too. Alright, I might, I thought I might find you to you. Oh, it's Emma. Emma, long time no see. Oh. Seems like I've run into you, into you far too often. I bet I know why you're here too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow? I've read about it, sure. So Mr. Wright trolls you, huh? We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Misham. And his daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention centre. It was funny though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit a murder. You don't say. Neither by poisoning. That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning is a common way to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. Poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here. Maybe my snappies. I can't talk to anyone related to this case this time around. Which means we better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. So this Drew Mission was some kind of artist. Apparently, they love illustrations from books I read. I read. And a lot of female fans too, for what it's worth. Oh, well I guess his stuff is kind of pretty. Like that oil painting over there for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations actually. Huh? So it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she means? It was an odd bird mission. I didn't show his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean to anyone? He was always locked up, in it, up here in his studio apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he put in that little box there. Letters? Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Paolo? I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? Don't most people use email and stuff these days? Not Mr. Mission. Couldn't stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe you thought that way was more artistic, you know? In any case, the only person besides him allowed in it was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. 
I defended, please. We took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Mushroom's and Vera's, basically. Fuck you mean, basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Mushroom gave an interview to a reporter for the first case, his first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. His first interview ever. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? So, wait, wait, wait. So, he died during the interview? And you don't arrest the interviewer. You arrest Vera. I'm so that that makes no sense ever. Ever. That make, that that makes no sense like at all. Like if that happened I route, the interviewer would be the very first suspect. I mean, do we even know that Vera was in the apartment when the interview was taking place? So, this woman, Vera. She's Mr. Misham's daughter, you right? Yep, a real sickly girl. Ever since she was little, hardly ever went outside. She did get she did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention centre. She was screaming about how she'd die if they ever if they took her outside. That does sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. A good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the, the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? Why would a shutting daughter kill her own dad? Don't look at me. So about the poison, there's one to be this coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely. What, what does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. And it just happened like that, he died the night of his first interview. Oh, she was there. At around 9pm every night, Vera always makes him a cup of, cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill and died. She passed in here on the night of his interview. What did the reporter see? It wasn't near Mr. Mission when she brought her her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the in the back of the room. Supposedly that's why she didn't notice he was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone is suspicious, it's the reporter. Yeah, that's what I said. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Mission's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. Yeah. The reporter seems like a bit of a weirdo, honestly. Huh. Let's examine. Let's examine the coffee cup. Ah, oh, that's the victim's coffee mug. Ah, so the poison was in air. This is my first time seeing a real poison mug of coffee. I'd hope so. Poison coffee. No, exactly, actually. What do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. Maybe she put something in. Maybe something he was allergic to was found there? What? You'll have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side after all. Okay. Widow. Hey. There's a painting in back here. Hey, you're right. Well, if it's embarrassing somehow and he didn't want anyone to see it. You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Huh, it's so normal. Is the finished one the other one? Is the, is the finished one the other one? That's hardly something to get mad about. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, does this painting look like... Never mind. I better get professional opinion on this. Yeah, it looks like this one. I wouldn't mind taking a closer look at those paintings. I just love virals, you know. How they so thick? How they how they're so thick? Is that the word? These paints are all dry. I'm just surprised at how different these all are. 
Yeah, and what's going on with this half finished one? It must have been a work in progress. You can still see the rough sketch below. That's what's that's what's so weird. The sketch part doesn't really fit the finished part. I noticed. That is weird. That is weird. That is so fucking weird. No, I don't want to take a closer look at the painting. I don't want to have a closer look at it. Just want to go over here and have a little, little, little look. What's in there? What's in there? Let's take a closer look at this desk here. This envelope has been open, has been opened and resealed. Ooh, I know how to do that. Take a pot of boiling water, hold the envelope up to the steam, the glue melts, and it opens. Cooler. Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Why would someone open a letter and seal it again? I better hang on to this. Huh? That's a bit, bit weird. That's a bit weird. Uh, yeah. That is a bit weird. Ah, uh, no clues there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know. Oh, I'll play one. That, let me look at the court record. That red envelope is a bit weird. Open it, Apollo. Apollo, look! It's been opened once here. You're right, I wonder if there's some way we can see what's inside. Should I try to get it open and then stick it back shut? Let's not tamper with the evidence, shall we? I've got a better idea. Emma, let's ask her. You know, yeah, let's just ask Emma. But first, I want to look at. Look, this, this like, way he slipped it is blue. Why the fuck is it blue? Hey, look there! That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the blue mountain stuff up in here and about. Something tells me that even blue mountain coffee is in this blue. No, this day is probably. Mm, better ask Emma. So, we just have to ask Emma, basically. And why is Auto Play still on? So. Ooh, we can. Forensic Science. I bet Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, Flattery will get you everywhere with her. Hello. Hmm. Huh. What are you talking about? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always, always do scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, maybe we can get um, scientific now. Oh, I suppose. Just this once. Bring me anything you find suspicious and we'll check it out. Oh, we have suspicious stuff, alright. We have suspicious stuff. First, the mug. Ah, I'm so used to double. I'm so used to double clicking to present. It's just ingrained in my bones at this point. Just ingrained in my bones to double click <laughs> to present. Um, I'm about this mug. There's a pale blue uh, residue on the rim. Ah, uh, that. Yes. Well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a very there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. Oh yeah, that's what we were talking about. That's what Paula was saying. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue armor. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's left over from my testing spray. Forensic science! I knew your hobby was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. Yeah, it's kind of her job. I mean, she's only a detect she's a detective at the precinct, not you know, a forensic analyst or whatever it's called. But still, it's kind of still involved with her job somehow. So what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? This spray is that's that this spray, that's what. It turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug. That's right, see? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim, rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma will be, will be willing to help us out more. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. It's, they say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. 
Hmm, about poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask about that. See, this solution is used to te test for atro winine. Atro huh? Atro quinine. The deadly poison found in the autopsy. How the fuck do you say atro quinine? Because I, I want to say either atro quinine or atro quinine. I have a feeling it's atro quinine. I also have a feeling this is a made up word in actual windine. This is, this is literally a made up word, yeah. The first thing that comes up is the Ace Attorney fandom wiki. <laughs> and then the second one is re fucking Reddit from r slash Ace Attorney. How, how the fuck do you pronounce it? Let me have a listen to how I pronounce it. That was no fucking help. I drove Quinine. I instinctively, I, I instinctively, I instinctively want to say in actual Quinine. That seems the most scientific pronunciation in Atroquinine, but I'm not sure. Uh oh, I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown. Uh, that's fine, really. We don't need to know all the gold details. details. I want to know. I wanna fucking know. My nerd brain want, my nerd brain wants to know all the details. I think I get it. You just spray the stuff on stuff and you want to test, right? Press Cecily. You can find even the slightest trace of poison with this. I wanna try it too, Emma. Pretty please. You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Yay, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah! What are you doing? I was just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this fair reaction? No, do that again! I'm not poisonous! Turn out to those hapless witnesses on the stand. Let's just get down to check in for real poison, shall we? Ooh. Why'd you spray it everywhere? I mean, we'll see when it becomes, you know, blue. Wait, I can just... Some space. Will Emma be pissed at me if I just... Spam this all over the place? Probably. I don't think we're getting anything. I don't think we're getting anything. Too bad. No reaction there. I'm sure I haven't checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know. Let's check it out, just to be sure. Huh. Is that poison on it? There's poison on that little picture frame, I think. Huh. Eek! A reaction, Apollo! Uh, where? Where? The inside of that cute little frame. Look. Oh, would you look at that? Nice going, Trusie. I'm known to work magic. Never mind that I was the one who found it. Yeah, it was us who found it. Not you. Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? Looks like we found the only other place that was poison in any case. We also have... We also have this, Emma. We also have this. Emma, about this. Uh, that... Yes. Why, that's a bright red envelope. She sure is jumpy. 
Someone opened this, didn't it? My lips are sealed. Come on, Emma! Your lips are sealed. That's a first. You mean, you know what's inside the envelope? Sure. I read it, after all. Ah, you mean you're the one who ripped this open? Ha, please. I'd have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek at it, apparently. Now that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yes, the use of tools. Highly specialised tools for information, information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try flattering up Apollo. They say a little play praise can open big doors. Never heard that one, boys. Good advice. Let's try talking to us some more. About that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an X-ray analyzer. X-ray. Are the X-rays you get at the dentist? That's right. At least that's why I call call it. Huh? It's a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray spectralization. 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 Something. How am I supposed to remember? Oh, that. So basically, it lets you see inside things. Like envelopes? That's right. You sharp truth it, truth it. But it's a bit more complicated than that. In practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works. Scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Uh, what are you doing? I'm just seeing if I can see through your hair. It's like lead. Point that thing at me anymore and it might fall out. Then would I need an x-ray machine to see through it? Let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. Okay. You set the sample in set a sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get all answer. Look at the right side of the screen. That's a layer view of the envelope. Layer view? You've got to set it to display the outside of the envelope now first. Actually it's quicker just to have you give it a try. Turn the dial with, uh, dial with the arrow keys for me, would you? Huh? That's right, that's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Yeah, that's something. See, that's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Cooler. Except, I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little bit more. Where you have to understand is that a sheet of paper it really isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see that papers, it's like... That paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Oh, really? This X-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0.5 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers so it can only show what's written on that layer. I'm not entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we've gone to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, would you? Rubbing? Like going over the image with W, A, S, and D while holding space? Oh, I could just hold my mouth. There, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again, just a little. Why wouldn't it let me do it by myself? Why wouldn't it let me turn the dial by myself? I want to turn the dial by myself. <laughs> Good, now you have to, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it. We just keep doing this until we've got the whole thing. Exactly, not bad. Neat, let's do some more. Oh, we can do it now. Okay, let's print this one out. 
Woohoo! I'm a big winner. Ahaha. <laughs> See, this is the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Then let's try it out on the real thing, shall we? out this letter okay let's print this one out mr drew misham i've deposited the hundred thousand uh, dollars in the designated account please send a receipt once you've confirmed the transfer someone deposited a hundred thousand uh, dollars into mr misham's account keep money to default to pounds man but i know it's dollars his paintings must be really valuable there's another page in there Care to take a look? You bet I do. If you're going to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. It goes to the second page then. Scanning more. This is actually quite a fun feature actually. This is such a satisfying feature. Okay, let's print this one out. Sign the papers and send in, send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within, within three days. I need not remind you to speak of this. Um, I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. That makes no sense in my brain. So it's a letter about payment for one of his paintings. Why the secrecy though? And, and what? Why was this letter the only one in it? It's seven years old, right? Maybe I had some special significance to him? Well, Emma? Well, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she keep, she's keeping more about it. So, Emma, I was wondering, what's the story about the supporter that came here for a story the night of the crime? Ah, I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow, yeah? I thought so. I never forget. I never forget that face. But what was his name? Oh right, Brushel. Brushel. Bit on the nose there, isn't it? He's after a scoop to tell it to the papers. So a reporter comes for an interview with a painter, and an interviewer called Brushel comes to interview a painter. Bit on the nose there. Bit on the nose. His view, first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange, strange to, the, to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. Just a few, just a few. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I is on beat, the beat today too. He said something about covering a, covering a magician. Magician? I'm guessing it's um, Gourmet, right? Well, if it's not true, say, that leaves only one other person. It wasn't about Gourmet by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up right here. Oh yeah, add in five minutes, add in five minutes. So he's out interviewing Valent Gomera. Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Yeah, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. Hmm. Hmm. Guess we're going to the Sunshine Coliseum now. Actually, before we get into the Sunshine Coliseum stuff, I'm just gonna start the ad now. I'm just gonna start the ad now, and then we can start the Sunshine Coliseum stuff. Okay, so it's gonna start. There we go. <laughs> I 
I never know what to talk about or ramble on about when it's like a one minute break because it's like I don't want to like leave all the people who use like ad blockers or like our subscribers or whatever like out of the picture and be like ah you go you guys you guys can just do whatever I just don't want it to be like silent for like this minute break but also also sometimes I need like a slight minute break so yeah <laughs> I feel like I talk about the same stuff during these like ad breaks but you know you know whatever whatever it's only a minute anyways so yeah and the if I now should be coming back sooner or later from the ad there we go there we go there we go, there we go. everyone should be back from the ad from the ad okay let's get to the sunshine coliseum oh my god i saw the blue badger it was uh, behind tuesday Woohoo! this is it apollo the place where magic and dreams converge just a while ago it was the place where murder and nightmares converged let's go say hi to uncle valent what about the case ha 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 is that grammare only a performer laughs like that yep it is valent grammare the young miss tuesday how often I hope I hoped we'd meet again only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. <laughs> Uncle Valent, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, Miss Truset, how does the day find you? If you come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck and congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles such as the one I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world it will be wonderment as magnif mag magnifies, magnifies illusions are reborn. Air on stage by my hand. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grimmere miracle is back after a seven year absence? Most true say, I must apologise. This show and this honour should have been his. Daddy. The co magician in training, Zach Grimmere. If that terrible thing hadn't. It's okay. Your father was a great magician, true say. If he were alive, then I, Valent Grimmere, would have been proud to stand upon this stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valen. You know, I'm happy you're doing this show. To think we get to see the great magnifi magnifies illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? My mentor, the magnificent magnified Grimere, was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defied our very imaginations. I was so little when I saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did wheel wheelies in a sports car through the air above the audience. And then spread off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit unfair For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to happen. As heir to the Grimmere troops' secrets, it falls on me to provide one. It is my god given destiny. Um, yes, you, nameless face who speaks for nameless masses. How can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Yeah, seven years is a bit of a long time. Mm, it appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law, which governs our land. I am, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnify's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years? That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? And why was that? A little matter called performance rights, true, Miss Trucy. What performance rights? Can you, can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnify's magic relied on an incredibly innovative idea, a trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property and as such was protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe. Magnify knew this and bequeathed it in his will to one person. You mean him? Yes, Miss Trucy, it was your father. Zach Grimere was the inheritor of the Grimere miracle. Daddy. Yeah, as you all know, he is gone. He disappeared suddenly seven years ago. I think I see where the story is going. 
once a person, once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased. Correct? In an, in all absoluteness, those roll, rolled up sleeves concealed your competence well, young man. That certain period of time of which you speak is seven years ago. Ah, yes, Miss Trusie. Though it though it pains me to say it. This spring past April to precise to be precise was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mental magnify passed to me. That was, in fact, stipulated in the will by Magnify himself. Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called death in absten absentia. He's declared missing. Permanently. Daddy. I feel so bad for Trucy, man. She deserves Trucy deserves better. So, a journalist was here on a story. All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit uh, its mysteries to paper. Um, his name is Brushel. 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 Yes, his name is Brushel. I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. Brush oh, that cloying smell of mint when he smiles, yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? Yeah, what did he want? What did Brusher want? A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? Balance vision, vision is always toward tomorrow. Balance feet stepped always forward. That is all. That's all. Very confusing. And to perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet, yeah, he had ears only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that rap rapturous reporter remo remove himself. So a painter has died, what of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Grimera. Uncle Balan, do you know where the reporter went? I recommended he visit that place popular with penalised perpetrators. The detention centre? He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? I'm um, sure. He will tear apart my respectability. I will tear him apart. Ooh, here it comes, Apollo. Uncle Valen's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? Not sure if that qualifies as big magic. What happened to the big magic? Ah ha 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 ha! Is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? He must have really not that liked that journalist. I think we have to. Can I put on this? Ha 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 ha! The challenge is it? You want me to make it that disappear? Very well, give it to me. Ah, no, 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 no thanks. Are all magicians like this? Apollo? What was that look just now? I'm just thinking how hard it is to get any information out of a magician. Hmm. Oh, it's shit, this. I have so many, char so many random charges. Just for no reason. For no reason. I probably have like 20, 20 different charges just scattered across my room somewhere. Like, I have, um, I have two lightning cables, two iPhone chargers for my iPhone 7s because it's not got my iPhone doesn't have USB C. I have one for my moon lamp. I have one for this watch because this is electric watch instead of standard watch. Um, and I probably have some other. I also have, I also have my um, charger for my headphone and headphones and my Kindle in my bag. So yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Aha, why that bears the Grimera seal. Hmm. Uncle Valent, is something wrong? Truce. Where did you get this? Well, Phoenix gave it to us. Uh, um, Daddy gave it to me. Your, your, your daddy? My partner's like, no, 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 no. My other daddy, Phoenix, right? Why not? Why would your lord daddy... Daddy, that's kind of stretching the whole archaic thing a bit. 
This signature upon the back, do you recognise it? That belongs to none other, none other than Zach Grimero. What? Daddy signed this? May I be so bold as to open it? I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. Mm -mm. Okay. Ah. What's in this envelope, I wonder? Now, the time has come when I must return to make my prestidigitation preparations. By your leave, Miss Tracy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. What do you think that journalist was after? And why did Valent react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. Yeah, I think so too. Detention. Uh, we have to go through. Write anything. And then. To the detention center. I miss the future in. I miss the future in. Um. I miss the future in Chronicles. Where we don't have to go be like. Go be like, oh, we gotta go to. Right anything then to get it you get to go through right anything to go to the detention center and every place was just in every place we had to go to was in the thing like we was in the list like for example we didn't have to go from uh we didn't, we didn't have to go from our office then to sherlock's suite then to the street outside of Sherlock, outside of uh 221b then to the pawnbrokers we could just go straight to the pawnbrokers from the office i think i hear what you're saying we're all doing it for the money and go no no no, no that's at all looks like someone's already meeting here maybe that reporter hey there how you doing who you might you be this is brushal in it he looks like a fucking toothbrush and he has a toothbrush right there Ah, sorry. We don't know. We didn't know what this one is already here. Uh, Paul Justice, attorney at law. Took a lot of monkey. You? Your Justice? You? You know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you. Stares down witnesses on stand today. Spill beans and go. Uh, that's not true. What's he writing? Are you a reporter by any chance? Oh, you? You're Trucy. Eh? Am I famous? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Trucy Wright hates carrying a bag. Puts everything she owns in her panties and quote. Hey, that's so not true. Just hold on to your breeches there. I wrap up this wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So God, I think I know what's going on here. Garden rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need? Quote. Now how many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You deal with him. Um, did you come in to interview the guard? Oh we what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk, had to interview someone or go some crazy end quote. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh there she is, there's Vera. I should have guessed. Where's my manners? Name is Brushel. Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist with closes, eyes right, in quotes. What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what's fr what filling is. Wild well, drop through crossroads of mayhem. Madness. End quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. Well, if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. Maybe. So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist? Army, look, let me say one thing for the record here. Uh, yeah? I'm the interviewer. You understand, yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here, unquote. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Yeah. I think he probably does. Exactly. I knew you would understand. Huh? This guy makes no sense at all. So a night out of murder, you are at Drew's studio? Ew, me? Look, let me say one thing for the record. Yeah? I'm in a common collective, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalist always buys one way tickets, never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but you want to know the thing about one way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. Oh, because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. 
But are they give normal tickets away too? Exactly, see, it's the same thing. What is? This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy is a piece of work, honestly. So you want to do a story on Dream Mission. And he'd never had a story done on it about him before? That's right. Look, let me say one thing for the wrap on it. What? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? What a, why did you interview in the first place? Oh, yeah. Look, it's like... Oh, I've got it. Say this is Burger John with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy is going to tell me where he got it? At a supermarket, maybe? Exactly, see? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls of his eyes, especially glass walls with speakers and quote right guess we'll leave then ah uh, but since you're here might as well tell you a tidbit of news i saw just for the heck of it sure tell us just for the heck of it i remember it like it was yesterday i'd seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup when an article in a tablet caught my eye Famous oil painting stolen from the art dealer's gallery. End quote, I believe it was. An oil painting? Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting of a giant peach. Like the one we got earlier. Journalists can spell scoop better than burgers, end quote. Okay. I think I know we need to go now. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was that one there was one thing I wanted to check with you. Hmm? What what's with that scary, scary face you you making? And what's with that I know something but I'm not telling face you've got going, Emma? Yeah, exactly. What was that what's the hidden painting? There we go, there is. This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah yes, so it was stolen though. No? I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit more about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Mission was a forger. A forger? Was he from Spike's family by any chance? So what exactly is a forger? Well basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes in other words. Fakes. Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise you can't tell them apart. But why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as a real article. It's a crime, of course. So Drew Mission was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his worst in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually. That's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can't, can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick on, in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like after all? Oh yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. I get it now. Now that I really, now that I really needed to go to such lengths. See, that's how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Mission's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That'd be interesting. Maybe valuable for our case. We should try bottering or Apollo. Flat rule will get you everywhere, they say. Mm. Maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Let's not talk to a presenter with. Hmm, we could present her with this. Hmm. Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting, and then I was wondering if you told that I might do the trick. Oh, fine, fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out. 
Ah, oh, we can choose which one. Yeah, I'm gonna go this one. Because we can. Satisfying thing. I love the I love the noises this makes. Okay, let's print this one out. Oh, that's very different from the one. What? What the heck? Oh, it really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. You probably thought you could draw any sort of thing you wanted to do for the rough. But what do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyse the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of charcoal, charcoal between paint, print and canvas. So you could only really tell, you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Oh, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely. Then they do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Mission was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think you could check out one of those other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detective detection stuff, don't you? Yeah, we can check out the other ones. I mean, this bit is fun. This bit is. This bit is extremely fun. Satisfying noise, oh my god. like the murder scene from what was the last what was the case called it was the one where we defended walkie um i don't think it was the last one we did i think it was the one before was it turned about corner i think it was turned about corner what was the last one we did what was the last one we did Talking about Serenade! Why do I keep forgetting about what <laughs> about Serenade is called? That is probably one of my favourite um, Apollo Justice cases. Well, out of, the, out of the four we've, out of the three we've played and... You know, I haven't formed a proper opinion of this one yet because obviously we've only, we're only done, we've only, we're only like in the middle of the first part. So... Yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah, I'll form an opinion of this one like after we finish this case but yeah the walkie case was turned about corner what's wrong Apollo? you look so serious after all of a sudden um you think i could just look at the last of these fine by me knock yourself out this one This is really satisfying.
Oh, is this? Clavier. It looks like Clavier on the tower thing. You know, Clavier like strumming his guitar on the tower thing from Serenade. Okay, let's print this one out. Yeah, it looks like Clavier with his guitar on fire. What the heck is all this? I said that I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your device is it isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these free set sketches. Do you notice anything? That one is a poker game. That one is the murder uh, with a cart, with a noodle cart, and that's Clavier's fire. The, cl the fire of Clavier's guitar. That they're, they're, they're both fire sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I've worked on. Oh, what? The murder in the poker room at the Barch Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then. The events that transpired during the Gavner's concert. What could he mean? How could he have drawn those things? And why? That's what I want to know. Wait, is True Mission your father? Give me a break. Does that seem even remotely possible to you? Never even heard of any Drew Mission before. I didn't even have seen a picture of him. But there were my cases drawn on his canvases. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Mission? And what did he have to do with me? Yeah, that is weird. That's very 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 weird okay i think we are going to do trial farmer um, and then we could do trial latter um on sunday so right now i'm going to run a um minute ad and yeah just save chill for a minute before we get back into turnabout um Succession. <laughs> One minute ad, please, please go. Please hurry up and run. There we go. There we go. Save. Is that, no, that's not the auto save. That's the, that's our normal save. Oh, you know what? I just remembered about this game. Yes, continue on to the next chapter. You know what? I completely forgot about this game. That it has 10 separate slaves. Uh, <laughs> not slave. Save slots. I managed the words save and slots together. Um, there's ten different save slots for um, each game. E so first, Apollo Justice, Dual Destinies, and um, what's the last one called? What's that? Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice. I think that's pretty cool, especially for the achievement owners. Oh yeah, we have the jurist um, system today. In, well, in this trial, I think. Which I think is pretty, pretty cool. And hello, welcome back. Welcome back, chatters. Welcome back, everyone. Good morning. Here's Vera. So, you're Vera, right? I'm Trucy. Trucy, right. That's right with a W. Uh, but you're not, uh, not right, right? Um... Why are you side? You can tell us anything, please. Good morning. She she speaks. Mm. Not bad, not bad. I think you do better with a little smile, you know. You're so pretty. You need to sell yourself, you know. Trucy, let's take it easy for starters. Yeah, chill the fuck out, Trucy. Thank you for taking my case. Okay, well, that's a start, I guess. There she goes with that nail polish again. That's great, really. It's so cultured. Want to try? Oh, really? Girls. The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger, and a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really, and maybe one that led to his death. Ah, we're up against Clavier. 
probably is in the top three of my is in the top three of my like favorite um prosecutors my top three prosecutors being francisca edward and clavia well we will now uh begin the uh, trial of the vera mission is the judge okay his voice is all raspy and he's looking around all nervous like um <clears throat> The repercussions of today's trial will most likely be felt for a long time and may indeed alter our legal system forever. Today is the test of the jury system and the first step towards a new order in our cause. Daddy's secret mission. The jurists will function like a jury. It is hoped that inclusion will help the courts to better reflect the people's will. Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Three closed circuit cameras watch these watch this courtroom at all times. The jurors have access to everything that transpires. Jurists, judge, well, and judge cool. Now, now, prosecutor, now, hey, now see here, <laughs> prosecutor Gavin. I was going to see that, say that. Ah, my apologies, her judge. Um, <clears throat> jurists, today, uh, judge today, today's trial, coolly, if you look kind, because so kind. The jurists are unbound by the, letter, unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial of evidence, but by their feelings. And we're about to find out just what effects they're going to have. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin, the details of the case if you would. The victim is the painter Drew Misham, who was killed in his own studio. His coffee was poisoned, by whom you ask? By none other by the defend than the than the defendant Vera Mission. There wasn't any poison in the coffee. Actung. Someone has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mug, our ah, residue was found in the room, I see. The autopsy report describes the manner of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. According to this report, the victim's death was caused by uh, atroquinine poisoning, a chemical chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosage is a mere 0.002 milligrams. A touch of atroquinine in the body is the touch of the reaper's scythe, just like the reaper of the Bailey. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. You may you may present your case, with your witness even. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case, a man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. That journalist, no doubt. The witness will state his name and occupation. Ah, right. Well, for starters, my name is Spark Bushel. My job is a lone observer of the world. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? If you don't mind, I'd like to state something here from the record. Yes, Mr. Bushel. I dislike conclusions, specifically the aspect of jumping to conclusions. AKA our whole entire fucking job. Preconceptions make park sandbox of endless endless desert waste and coal. But you are a journalist. You said so yourself yesterday. Well, that's true, yes. But you must understand I stand before you today a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive rights to the story. Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel. End quote. Let's see your testimony then, shall we? A simple case, eh, Gavin? For me, the jury is still out. Witness testimony. I visited the studio around nine that night to do the, to do the interview. The first outsider to enter the atelier, atelier. journalist, journalistic history main, end quote. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. And you know what happened next? Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Hmm, that does sound like a simple case. Unless you're the one who poisoned him? Uh, what are you saying, judge? <clears throat> and I remind you the cameras are rolling today. I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. 
be a bit dramatic for the jury. You didn't do it, did you? Me do a thing like that? Come on, that's like news maker making news, end quote. I went contemporary witch, witch hunt, end quote. Uh, I know, wild accusations rock courtroom, end quote. Ah, rock indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. Very well, Mr. Justice, your cross examination, please. Let's do the thing. But first, we must serve in case this cross examination goes horrifically wrong, then we can just restart it. Da -da -da -da. The first attack of the I thought about it started. I know what happened next. Clarify for us, please. What is what's this about a star falling? Star falls, huh? It's like an old telegram. Send money over. So we you don't know. That's not like a journalist's journalism's cold word. An important person a personage passes passes blah. Personage passes away. A star falls. Get it? But it's no gravity in space, is there? I don't think stars could fall, really. Does this matter? Oh boy, this is good stuff, good stuff. How about stars break? Nah, lax punch. Yeah, lax punch. I know, I know. Star dies. Nah, lax imagination. Of course you could go with Drew dies. Straight to the point, I like it. I think we need to hear about something a little bit more substantial. It's coffee. You say, you say Mr. Bishop had the coffee too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course. He sees it win, wins, but he who says it wins bigger, end quote. I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about it world yet. Yeah. I guess I can't say I really saw him drink it, really. He had one so called sip, if that. Man put slips to mug drinks, end quote. Hmm. That person is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault, since I gulped down that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Well, maybe something's there, some kind of so-called trick. Anyone who wants to venture a guess, for the record? Does this guy have a pause button? Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Yeah. Let's have him put it in his um, actual testimony. The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over. Oh yes, you can you can go press go to press with that one. You are it. This is a vital piece of information. Please add, please add this to the testimony. Very well. The witness will add this to his testimony. Vital. Right. He had one sip at that. The next moment, he was on the floor. You know what I have a problem with? A particular property of the poison used, a triquinine. Oh, Prosecutor Gavin was quite clear about the poison. A lethal dosage of 0.002 milligrams paralyzes the central nervous system. If you drank that, even you, Mr. Justice, would re be reduced to a quivering pile. Why are you using me as an example? Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There's a vital omission in Prosecutor Gavin's information. An omission? Actual quinine is, a is as virulent as he says. But death doesn't come upon ingestion, not immediately. That's because actual quinine is slow acting. Slow acting? Whoa, 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 whoa. According to one forensic scientist, <coughs> Emma, it's one of the most virulent poisons, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. If we suppose that the moment Mr. Misham sipped the coffee was when he sealed his fate, and I have a Discord notification now. There we go. I was just checking the Discord notification. And he would still have had time to left to enjoy his last cup of joe. Unless he was a... 
there is a lot of atrocanine but also it's slow acting so the amount wouldn't really matter as much because it's slow acting Ardo, Ardo, what's the meaning of this? If what the defense says is correct, why, that contradicts the entire testimony we've just heard. Well, Mr. Bushel, anything to say, to say on the record? Slow acting. S L O A C T. It was very real in him, right? Even then, it had already begun digging its claws into the journalist. He's working on his scheme. Objection! It's Brushel, yeah? Air Brushel. Let's take a trip down back down memory lane. Huh? Did the victim really die the instant he took a sip? Think it over. This is vital. You know what I think? I think it that was a not so subliminal suggestion. End quote. I admit it does cause a problem if he died when you say say he died. I'll be forced to say off Windershin. Uh, to say to a simple case, what does that mean? Off window shun. I don't even know if that's the correct pronunciation. We the uh we the Um. Uh, it just means like reunion. And you'll be forced to say farewell to your article. Come again. You can't write a story based on conjecture, can you? As the case drags on, other reporters will be will pick up the scent. And you'll be forced to kiss your exclusive scoop goodbye. Scoop, scoop. Look, wait, just wait a second. Just one second. We're waiting, we're waiting. Out with it! I think I just recorded a so called important detail. A revival of recollection, end quote. A story survival, end quote. A tiny, utterly confused, end quote. Actually, I did notice something when I visited the studio. I'd heard of poison that takes its sweet time, see. But know what I've been saying for the last few minutes, apparently. Oh, what Apollo said, at all. Mr. Brushel, are you saying you noticed something that explains what happened? You bet I am. The antidote for a poisonous contract. Contradiction. I thought I thought that meant. So I thought that it said contraction, not contradiction. End quote. You might say. Oh, oh! I still have no idea what you're talking about. End quote. I might say. I figured it out, but only after an in-depth interview. See, thanks to my journalism skills, I know who poisoned that coffee. Order, order, order. As far as I can tell, the witness is standing by his testimony. That Mr. Misham died the instant after he drank. Of course, I'm standing by my testimony and my dream of exclusive rights to the story. <sighs> I suppose it was too much to hope for. What was? Of course, he wouldn't choose a simple case, not him. Him? Phoenix right. who else? Actung, her brussel. Her brussel. Report for us if you would. What is it that you know is? This court is a critical trial of the jurist system. I'm afraid no room for doubt is permissible. You will testify to the court about what you noticed. What Brushel noticed? When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Mission was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? But it wasn't. Hmm, a suicide note? Yes, he had this look on his face. Man's face inscrutable as a quadratic equation, end quote. Suicide? Poor Mr. Misham. But that means Vera is innocent. Would someone commit suicide in the middle of an interview? Oh, very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Dun, 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 dun. We've got to save again. Hmm. Tell us more about this letter. Tell us more. So he put the letter away when you. He put the letter away when he saw you. 
Ellie reporter gets web, end quote. That's my secret. Not sure I follow. It's a night at the interview. I arrive 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The handle turns, the door opens, and I barge in. Are you sure that's okay to do? I mean, isn't that unlawful entry, really? Mr. Misham sure seemed to think so. You should have seen him. He crammed his letter into a yellow envelope as fast as he could. I know a secret when I spot one, and that was one. It does seem significant. Well, Mr. Justice? I wonder. He has the ring of some import add to testimony. The defence finds this testimony vital, Your Honor. Very well. Please add it to the testimony then. Hey, why not? My account comes free of charge. But it wasn't a yellow envelope. We know that. Objection! As it just ha so happens, there's a single letter in a desk drawer at the scene in a red envelope. Uh, what? Prosecutor Gavin. Yes. Was a yellow envelope found at the scene of the crime? Unfortunately, no. But her far red. It's easy to mistake the colour of an envelope. Now, ah! I guess, but not this envelope. You see, it was postmarked already seven years ago. Well, Mr. Bushel, I can explain that. True. Right, you wanted to get that envelope in an envelope pronto. Get it out of sight of my beady eyes, right? So you grab the nearest envelope and crammed away. What about the whole red and yellow envelope contradiction chump? Well, Mr. Justice, have you anything to say to the witness's claim? That night, the victim put a letter he had been writing in an N in a red envelope. That's impossible. I like your expression. So full of confidence. It's simple, really. As it just so happens, the defence team is investigating the contents of this em envelope with the assistance of a forensic scientist. What? Note that this letter is addressed to Drew Misham. Oh. Why would he address the letter to himself? Let alone send a suicide note to himself. I've been scooped. Order, order, order. Mr. Brushel, can you explain this to the court? Oh my, my, my. How could I have forgotten? I suppose this happens to the best of us. Reporters get sold, get slots, and what? I'm still waiting for an explanation, Mr. Bushel. That's a thing, see. After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp, a so called postage stamp. End quote. A stamp? Whatever for? Well, to mail his letter of Wells. And then, why, yes, I think I saw him put, in, put it in his letter box. Yes, it was a yellow envelope and he put it in that box. Well, apparently this yellow letter has nothing to do with the case. Oh, well, hi, I wish it did. Just think if that were a suicide note, what a story. Star writes suicide note in front of a report of falls. And what? <laughs> As I was saying, that has nothing to do with the case. That said, yes, Your Honor. It makes me wonder about the contents of that red envelope. Mr. Drew Mitchell have deposited the $100,000 in the destination account. Send the papers, send in the enclosed envelope. We have the enclosed stuff for the three days. $100,000 is quite a deal of money. So this it was seven, from seven years ago, yeah? So, am I finished? Yeah, I mean, am I finished here? Eh? I'm thinking of, you know, going on to start writing. Um, I hate to state what should be pretty obvious to anyone, but when you catch the scent of a story, you make that uh, rather unique face. Ah, come on! Antonia has active imagination, little else, end quote. Even I noticed something, and my eyes aren't what they used to be. You know, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to understand what all this perceiving stuff is all about. Due to active imagination, end quote. Please continue with your testimony. When did the barcode go? I only just noticed that the barcode is no longer 
Let's get inside of this. Hmm. Must have gotten washed off. Tell us about the scent of the story. Hey, I'm the one asking the questions there. Usually. Wait, another witness testimony. We're flying through these. This is our third testimony? Actually, it took a bit of work to get our thumbs up on the interview. Report on Leverage's story. Get us his interview. End quote. The story concerned a certain case from seven years ago. That red envelope probably had some interview with it. Say what you will, but Drew's talent was without compare. So you friends have got to press with this story? That's how you got your interview? Blackmail? Well, yes. I mean, no! No, 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 no! It wasn't exactly black. I mean, I'm not- Ah! Something wrong, Mr. Bushel? Uh, look. This is my story. My tidbit. Journalists' info is livelihood, end quote. I see. Well, you have me chatting away in here. What's going on out there? Well, some Wally Wordsmith or Sally Scooper gets wind of my story. They could be going to the press while I'm going to waste. The court feels your pain, Mr. Bushel. Mr. Justice, let's pick up the case. A certain case seven years ago. Wait, seven years ago? Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. And we have our bracelet. No ability to use our bracelet. You're hiding something. Ah! Don't you tell her. <laughs> Don't yell at all of a sudden or uh, something like that. You'll give a guy a heart attack. Ah, sorry, it's just. Uh, it's just the way you were moving just now. It was particularly suspicious. What is that, that supposed to mean? So usually I'm just sort of averagely suspicious. Sorry, my mistake. You're fine. I just know I'm onto something here. Time to focus. You're sweating. This is always such a cool little cutscene as well. Sweat much, Mr. Bushel? Eh, uh, eh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm just getting Steam notifications that Kip is playing Stardew. This is the third time I've gotten a notification that Kip is playing Stardew. How? You good, Kip? <laughs> you good? Uh, uh, well, yeah, well, a man can't help his bland, you know. It's more than that. When Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned, he suddenly began to sweat buckets. Ah. Yeah, bit weird. Bit, bit, bit weird. You're hiding something about his talent. What? The, the, that's ridiculous. Evidence time. Let's show him where Mr. Mission's true talent lay. Just don't have to find evidence to show him the talent mentioned in that letter. And let's present our painting. Uh, this painting was found in Mr. Mission's studio. Yeah, it was found in Bandish brand drawers. There are two problems with this painting. The first 
is it wasn't painted by Mr. Mitchell. The second is that there was another painting in the studio which looked exactly like this one, except it was only half done. Then we have a letter discussing the payment of $100,000, which suggests a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. It reminds me of something when he does that, I don't know what. Like those kind of toys, you, like those kind of stretchy toys you'd get like, no, like, Hello, stretch Armstrong from the 80s. I like the 90s. But more of like the stuff from like more like 2000s, 2010s, even 2020s. Such so as like Alan, um, Mommy Long Legs from, uh, from a uh, Pong Playtime. But you know, but you know, not Mommy Long Legs. Something along those lines. That is all, Yana. Everyone, please, everyone. Can we keep this private, please? This is my story, my scoop. Fardry, that's a serious crime. Drew Mitchell is known as an artist these days, but there were rumours he dabbled in another kind of art until a few back years back. Uh, another art, meaning Fardry? Drew Mitchell was talented, alright. Talented at making precise, detailed fakes. I fact that certain criminals' element, elements were quick to discover. Criminal elements? What? You can't seriously be talking about. Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. The rumor started circulating seven years ago. Seven years ago? So we are we to understand that this letter, this payment of a hundred thousand dollars, was for exactly forged evidence. Next tidy profit and quote. Okay, this is quite interesting. This got very interesting indeed. Order, order, order. Why, well, it's like our victim was living a double life. Aha, this is my chance. So the victim had ties to the criminal world, right? He could have had plenty of enemies we know nothing about. This is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We certainly found no criminal connections when we conducted our investigation. But how do you explain all this money? We have to admit there's a possibility of some illegal activity here. There's no proof tying this letter to our case. Our case was and remains simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mug that night. And you, of course. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I poison is my pen when I'm writing reviews. Mr. Bushel, your testimony to this point has been quite unreliable. Does not speak well of your reporting a human? What are you talking about? My journalism is rock solid. Journalism is so solid you can stand on an elephant on it. And go. In any case. Let's hear a summarise recap by your testimony. If we can ascertain the situation in that studio from the recap, the trial is over. Apollo, what's he talking about? The cross-examination showed Mr. Bushel didn't have reason or means to poison him. As long as there's no other suspects. Then the killer had to be Vera, that's what. This next testimony is our last chance. Mr. Brushel, your testimony, please. Witness testimony, yeah. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She, she's admitted this much herself. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug. And nothing else, nothing left that studio after he died. Nothing. Clearly, the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. Hmm. Why is someone already pre poisoned the cops? But then again, but then again, Brushel would have died if uh, the killer just went in and pre poisoned all the cops because Brushel also had coffee. The only one that wouldn't have died would have been Vera, and we would have a similar situation, but just our witness then. A nice testimony, clear, succinct, succinct, uh, succinct and without room for doubt. But maybe did did Bushel drink coffee? Drink the coffee? I don't know. Oh, shucks, you really think so? I believe this clarifies the situation that night. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may begin your cross, your final cross examination. Is Kip good? 
<laughs> give, me a, give me a notification so that they're uh, playing Stardew. Right? I still have one trump card left to play, and I won't let it start trial end until I use it. Let's have a little, little save. The only other person in the studio that night was Vera, we know this. Vera poured the coffee, yes. The only thing that, yeah. Um, nothing less. Hmm. Did nothing that leave the studio. That one thing? You sure? Yep, sure as sure can be. Well, with one exception. One exception? What? Journalist Spark Bushel does interview, leave studio, end quote. Just Bushel left the studio? Ah, come on. It's a joke, get it? Not funny, I know, but still. Did something leave the studio that night? Why does that sound familiar? Where have I heard something like that before? Now I know that we've proven our witness is a comedian of sorts. I'd like to turn out to our defense attorney before returning to the testimony. Do you have any idea what, if anything, might have left the studio? Then I just one thing. I think one thing might very well have left the studio that night, actually. I said it's something that has vanished from the crime scene. By which you mean something other than our witness? Of course. Don't tell me, very much. Believe me, any comic relief I may provide is entirely unintentional. Then let's see what you have got for us, Mr. Justice. Well, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime, so I can't show it to you. But I do have evidence that shows it how it could have been taken from the scene. This is the only link between that studio and the outside world. A little box? What did Mr. Brushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder, the bitch man just finished writing that letter. Yeah, I just said that, and yeah, it was true. Furthermore, you went on to tell us that he put the letter in a yellow envelope and put it in the letterbox. But that very same letterbox was empty. In other words, that night the yellow envelope disappeared. Ah oh yes, intriguing, so an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? Here's a point, Mr. Justice. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a point. What we're trying to figure out here is how the poison got into Mr. Mitchell. Is it really important that the envelope that a witness says he saw disappeared? Well, if it did, then something did leave the studio that night. That seems very important to me. Very well then, the witness will add to this to his testimony. You got it. I still think this fails to change anything, come forward. I wouldn't be so sure. I let it disappear from the crime scene that night. This is exactly the opening I've been looking for. Mm. You sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, I was busy gobbling big candies the whole time. Well, none of those candies might have been poisoned. Apollo is a dumbass. My favorite, one of my favorite dumbasses, but dumbass nonetheless. Yeah, at the time of the autopsy, no fresh fragrance of mint filled the room, and no mint residue was found. It's a long shot anyway. Don't tell me you're still trying to prove this. You think the victim ate, drank, or otherwise ingested something other than coffee? Hmm. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have some proof, the possibility is that I can feel it. Just maybe not prove it. Not yet. A possibility is I'm going to cut it now. No, no. Mr. Moo Misham ingested that uh, poison via a route other than the coffee. Proof. Proof is possible. Here goes nothing. You do understand what we need, yeah? Proof her forehead, not possibilities. Of course, and prosecutor Gavin, I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. What did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. 
I started writing a letter, I did. Which was picked up by the mailman, I assume. Of course, which means that envelope had a stamp on it. A stamp. Ah. As we all know, stamps come uh, with dried glued on the, with glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wear it by licking the stamp. Objection! You've lost me entirely. <laughs> no one... No one worth talking to actually leaks stamps in this day and age. If you just wanted to talk to him, you couldn't. He's dead after all. Okay, so he licked the stamp. But wait, how does that explain the actual quinine and the remember the coffee mug? If he licked the back of a poison stamp, the poison would get on his tongue, yes? What would then happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth? Those traces on the mug were the killers doing. It was the other way around. What? The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop poisoned the coffee mug himself. So he already had the poison in his system and he had some residue on his tongue. And when he took his took a drink of his coffee, he left some uh, poison residue on the rim of the coffee cup. Order, order, order. But that doesn't, does it? Recall if you would. A true quinine is a slow acting poison, yes. The poison entered his body when he put the stamp on that envelope. But his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lips to that cup of joe. I like his animations. I like Bushel's animations. They're quite silly and fun. You have something to add, Mr. Bushel? Uh oh, his nose is picking up another sign. As I believe I mentioned earlier. Well, that's the thing, see. After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Mishum sat there searching his desk drawer for something. He has a stamp, a so-called so postage stamp, end quote. But you know, I don't seem to remember him ever finding one. Maybe he just went out. Incidentally, we searched through the desk drawer at the scene of the crime. There are no stamps. Not a single one. Hmm. It does pose a problem. How will you prove that stamp was coated with poison? Actually, I'm glad no other stamps were found. It makes proving the stamp he used poison possible. What do you say? It makes proving the stamp he used was poison possible. Good show, good show. You can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene in the first place. Let's see what the defense has to say, anyways. Hmm. This was the only thing. That was poison, so I'm gonna present that. Well, let's see what the defense has to say anyway. Where's your evidence that proves the existence of this poison stamp? Take that! Well, that certainly is a cute little frame. And by little, I mean really little. It was on the victim's desk, Your Honor. Quite empty, as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my inspection. So what? Ah, uh, apparently you weren't as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Missing something. Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Actual clean residue. What? Well, I wasn't I told about this. The frame is only two inches square. The face of the the face of the frame is even smaller. Maybe an inch wide at most. You want saying? Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps? Order, order, order. The poison stamp was in this frame. Impossible. Uh huh. We need more victim. though. Prosecutor Gavin. Why would he put something like that on his desk? Don't tell me he had it in there so he could commit suicide if the mood struck. You know, can I say something? I had a thought, see. Well, Mr. Bushel, and please stop jittering around like that. The victim was a forger, right? There's a lot of money in that line of work. Forger, forger is friends. Make, makes enemies too. End quote. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon in there. Oh, rich. That's rich. These are ridiculous flights of fancy to the governor's song lyrics, please. Finally, something we can agree on. 
The stab was a murder weapon. Nonsense. Murder is a simple business. It would go to such lengths. No one. Oh, I disagree. C come again? Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. True Misham hid from the world. He invited meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. The mail? Now, if you wanted to kill someone you couldn't meet, but you knew red letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon. Ridiculous. Where's your proof? Our proof. Show us evidence that this poison stamp was meant to send to him as a murder weapon. I might not have evidence per se, but things are finally starting to come together. What is it, Apollo? Your fists are trembling. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Mission was killed. Well, fill us in, Mr. Justice. A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Mission the scent of death. Not a scent of death, stamp of death. The letter, the red letter. Isn't this the, the envelope? The one from seven years ago? Think about the text of the letter again. There are two pages in the envelope. This is page one. This is page two. I want to draw your attention to one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. The enclosed stamp, Your Honor. Ah. In other words, if I add, if I add this straight, this sta the stamp, poison, and the liquor, on the stamp, lick, lick, gas, and quart. Now what? If he had done exactly as the letter asked, then it just wretch. He would send the document, put it in the envelope, and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in his envelope. Fifteen minutes wouldn't have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter, but the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath, and the murder weapon would be taken away from the scene. Quite conveniently, Thanks to the postal system. Such a splendid imagination you have, Fafar Red. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. So this poison stamp was inside this envelope from the seven years ago, yeah? Is that what you'd have us believe, really? Well... It's a little bit of a stretch, but there is a, po there is a possibility. Yeah, it's a very small possibility. How small, I wonder. Um, a poison stamp in this envelope, a stamp that then became the murder weapon. How do you intend to prove this seeming coincidence? Coincidence. Well, it was seven years ago and we don't even know who sent that letter. And your answer is silence. I see. Very well, I move on to. It's not nice to pick on the Fryland Claudia. Christoph. Oh, it's Emma. Uh, Emma. I, 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 I slightly, slightly, maybe panicked saying that was Christoph. Ah, uh, beloved, it's that, but don't worry, it's just that beloved Emma. Well, like my Christoph Gavin impression, did I sound like him? Don't quit your day job. Don't you have a crime scene to be looking after Fryland Detective? Someone had to come dig you out of all this mess you're making in this case. Mess? You know, none of this would happen if you just trusted in science a little more. You can find out if that stamp was in that envelope easy. Care to explain yourself, Fryland Detective? Glad me all you want, but science is on my side. It's all in the residue, right? That's right, the poison detection spray. I'm gonna sneeze. It's one of those moments where I need to sneeze. But also, I know I'm probably not gonna sneeze, so. <laughs> Produce the red envelope at once. You can open it on the authority of the court. Ew, 
Ew, ew, ew. Well, would you look at that? No, I'm mistaking it. That's the actual queen recipe. Actual queen? What a fancy little word. I, I don't believe it. A murder weapon from the past. Now, seven years later, it bears its tongues at last. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why did this murder take place seven years ago? Well, um, there's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Mission figured it out. Figured what out? He realised that the person who sent that letter wanted him dead. So he sent his reply with a different stamp. And put his decisive evidence in a frame. Ah, you still eh? Can I make a statement here on the record? I, Spark, raised toothbrush, cleaned the scooper's mind. The mission killed and cloned blood, blood by sending out a seven year old letter, end quote. No, maybe something more succinct. Star falls after seven years' delay, I know. Order, order, order. I see no room for further argument here. Though I admit this is all coming as quite a shock. To think that the murder weapon reached his mouth after seven years. Stamp is ticket, ticket straight to afterlife. End quote. Oh, I think the witness. What did she say? What did Tracy say? I see. Uh, oh, I think the witness is a bad influence on our judge. I see no need for further invest the further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. Apollo, I think we just won. Very well. This court finds the defendant. Oh, clap, yeah! Fuck's sake, man. You're going way down to the fucking bottom of my favourite prosecutor's list. Is this the bright future, future of our legal system? Prosecutor Gavin? I took it to the afterlife from seven years ago. Tickets for Gavin's shows are invalid after two weeks. But does it make sense any other way? It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction in her forehead's claim. A contradiction? A poison stamp was placed in this evidence. I will. Okay. I'm so tired. <laughs> Seven years ago, around a point it was framed until now. If that's the case, then why would Drew and Mission have done what he did? I might explain that. He must have realised it was poisoned. Therein lies the rub. Seven years ago, the forger through mission sensed a trap and put the stamp in a frame. I did not debate this, but this begs the question, why seven years later did he use that stamp on the night of the murder? Ah, surely you don't mean to suggest that Mr. Mission simply forgot? He put the murder weapon in a frame on his desk for seven years and forgot? You expect us to believe he sprung the trap on himself? Uh, yeah, you cut. You know what, that's a fair enough assessment. That's a fair enough assessment, Flavia. Well, I admit this is all quite shocking myself. It does seem highly unlikely that he would fall of follow, follow, follow a trap that had been sitting on his desk for seven years. At uh, Apollo, I don't think we're winning anymore. I'm glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality. Good to wait here. Okay. Then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in this envelope? The poison stamp? Why is that to this poison stamp again? And brought it to the court for us? Uh, I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. What about the actual quinine residue, huh? I agree, that does seem to be actual quinine residue. But, I far read. It's certainly no stamp. Yeah, but... Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, True Mission never would have used it. That is at all. That is at all. Ugh. I believe we've come to a conclusion. Again. At Apollo. Were we wrong the whole time? I can't believe it. The person traces matches up. It can't be a coincidence. I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime this year. 
Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor. Let's review the facts and see where we stand. Seven years ago, two emissions received at a red envelope. There were traces of a deposit etroquinine on the document inside that envelope. A simple trace was also found at the crime scene on this tiny picture frame. The, fe the defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope. An envelope that left the scene of the crime with poison stamp on it. Yes, but even if the envelope contained a poison stamp, Andrew Misham, knowing this, put it in a frame. He never would have used that stamp. I'm afraid you're right, which means there is a fatal flaw in the defense's case. If I've been on the wrong track in this whole time, I'm sure of it. The traces of atroquinine, the envelope, the frame, and Drew Misham's mysterious death. They're all connected somehow. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. We've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense, which means that one of our clues must be a fake. Our fake clue? Fascinating. And if we find this fake, your wild fantasies will prove quite reasonable, yeah? The fake clue that's thrown off, uh, thrown us off the poisonous trail is none other than... True Mission. The fake clue was a fake clue. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That's all. That all makes sense. But what does make sense is the victim himself. Congratulations, you've completely lost me, and you've lost me as well, because I'm fucking tired and I want to go dancing. So the fake evidence is none other than the master of fake uh, himself, the forger. It makes a good story. I'll give you that. The fake clue, fakes, forgeries. Ah. I know that face. That's the I just had an idea face. I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. What if our forger is the fake? Come again? Seven years ago, our forger slipped a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed. And the forger stumbles into that very same trap and dies. Why? That's what I want to know. Because the forger who was killed was a fake. Here we are again. Victim was a fake. When Forges smelled the trap, when Forges fell into the trap. That's two Forges, and one of them was a fake. Harder, harder, harder. So you're telling us that Drew Misham, the victim, was a fake? Well, if he was a fake, he was the real Forger. You'd better not be claiming there was some kind of switcheroo. I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story. Mr. Justice, show us who was the real who the real, real Drew Mission was. If Drew Mission wasn't a real forger, there's only one other person who could have been. Understood, Your Honor. Forger Drew Mission was himself a forger. The real forger was it must have been Vera. There can only be there can be only one explanation, really. Yeah, the, uh, the real identity of the forger known as Drew Misham is none other than his only daughter, Vera Misham. Ada, 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 Mr. Justice, this is going out on a limb, even for you. I kind of agree. I mean, Vera, a forger. Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery has been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forgery wasn't caught in that trap seven years ago. This can only mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forgery. Well, actually that does make a certain kind of sense. One more thing, only two sets of fingerprints were found in the forgery studio. Two emissions and their emissions. If we know that Drew Mission wasn't the forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The forger was Vera Mission. Well, fascinating. Vera Mission, you've been paying attention to the trial so far. 
Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the fire judge you mission? What was that An expression of emotion I saw on her face? She stained holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I used to be stared at by Farlands, believe me. Though, they usually talk to me too. Tell us, were you the one who found those works about? Yes. So, so the Farger drew mission was you? Yes, it was me. What? What? The court was in an uproar and it wasn't coming down. We had to break for a 10 minute recess. To be continued. And that, and that, 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 that shall be the end. I'm going to just quickly say it. The end of this stream. Uh, we have, we have uh, the second part of the trial that we'll do on um the second part of the trial that we'll do on um sunday and then we have another trial from seven years ago that we'll do next week and then we have another investigation and another trial that we'll do next sunday so yeah we have quite a bit to do well, quite a bit to do. Um, I'm going to ice fish. Um, but yeah, return to games and menu. <gasps> do, 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 do. Mm. Who shall we raid today? Who shall we raid? Mm. Who shall we raid? Mm. I'm gonna quickly exit. Apollo Justice. Who shall we raid? Let's raid. Hmm. Let's raid. Let's raid. Hmm. Let's raid Nordic. Let's raid Nordic. He's playing. He's playing a bit of Valorant. He's playing a bit of Valorant. So yeah. So yeah. We're gonna go raid Nordic. So such raid Nordic. Hope you have enjoyed the stream. Remember, we're streaming again on Sunday, doing the second part of this trial. Um, just the second part of this trial on Sunday, and then we're doing the second trial from seven years ago next week. And then we've got an investigation and a another trial, um, on which are both one parts. So the final investigation and the final final trial are both one part each, and so those will be done next Sunday. And yeah, that'll be the it for the first apology justice. We still have dual destinies and spirit of justice. And yeah, yeah, that's it. I shall see you guys on Sunday. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye.